I have a, a, a question. Um, this is this is super interesting. Um, it's not on the script though. So Nathan, sorry. Um, I was actually just talking with a good friend of mine and I, I and and we were talking about how we have different communities, like different circles, right? And of which like we have our lives, we have our family, we have our friends, we have our colleagues, we have, you know, you know, I have professional associations I belong to. Um, I'm also part of a, you know, I'm a community member in a small town. And we were talking about how there's sometimes angst when multiple communities like overlap with each other. Do you know what I'm talking about? Like, so for example, if I'm out somewhere and I'm with a family member or a friend and then I, a work colleague comes or, you know, and, and they know me, but they know me in two different communities. Like, have I, I'm not even sure what I'm getting at here, but it's like, this is like an interesting sort of like angst people feel. Cause like community makes up who you are. Right. But what happens when you are trying to, maybe it's trying to represent multiple communities at the same time. Is that. Yes. So, so code switching or context switching um, is something that you're dealing with. And when you're merging those two, you don't know where you need to be. They said that we have actually three lives. We have a public life, a private life and a secret life. <laughs> so the, the, the thing that we, we share uh, with the world and then just our family and then the thing that you only talk about in counseling, those, those three lives, if they are like, if there's a conflict and there's a crossover, it could um, basically tap into a, a, the level of vulnerability that you want to present. And if you are um, bombastic and, and boisterous with your friends, but at work you're reserved, how do you act when those two like contexts are crossed over? Uh, do you turn around and say, hi, very nice to meet you. And then say, Hey girl. I mean, you can't just do both. <laughs> um, so that's kind of why it makes it awkward. Um, when a high school friend that you haven't seen in years comes and, uh, comes across the room while you're with, um, a, a new spouse that, that you're a totally changed person how do you present yourself in a way that's accepted the way that is expected and a way that you're yourself want to make sure that you write your own narrative. So yeah, it's a little bit of a, a, a conflict. Um, and the only way to really kind of get over that is to find a way to integrate your personas. Um, maybe not move your secret life into your public life, but maybe into your personal life more or move some of your personal life into your public life more. So that crossover allows you to be able to make those transitions easier when um, someone from work goes to a crocheting meetup and then you're there. Um, that aspect of you, if that's part of your identity at work, where you're letting your hobbies uh, show that you are more than just who you are at work. And then, um, then talking to your spouse about a really deep um, mental crisis allows you also to have those conversations more fluidly with people that you care about. In a strange way, it feels like the pitch deck for Instagram. What if your secret life could be your public life? And then that was what we're all sort of living with. But I think that's really um, fascinating to think about. I, I had this story where someone a couple of years ago told me that it was really fun at a work event where my family was there to see my kids not listening to me because I'm the CEO. And I thought mm. like, why do you think they would care that I'm the CEO? Like, that's not how, I mean, like that doesn't matter to them. They treat me just like every other dad gets treated. But for them, it was really interesting context to see these worlds sort of collide where, you know, in some circles, you're in a position of some relative power. And in another, you're just another dad with kids that are doing what kids do. And it was interesting to me that that was so different to them where that just seemed like sort of a natural thing to me. So, um, yeah, interesting. I, I've never heard that framing of the three lives, but it it will give me something to think about for, for quite a while today. That was good. Yeah, it all goes into psychological safety. So you're only going to limit yourself, your vulnerability uh, to the point where you're willing to get hurt, I guess, right? And so that's why um, from a, a work perspective, if I, um, like when you read my bio, it mentions all the things that I'm passionate about. And that's the reason why I include those little nuggets in my bio, because I, I want to do that crossover. I want to be able to be authentically me in as many settings as possible. 
Yeah, it's really interesting because I think too, that's almost like a, a, um, something that is just, people are just kind of starting to embrace. I mean, I remember when Facebook came on the scene, right? And it was like, I had an account and my good friend at work had an account, but like, she didn't want to be friends with me because like, she's like, I don't really want you to know. It's not like she had a bad personal life. It was just sort of like, she didn't want to, like there were boundaries, right? Where, so anyway, I think that's that's all evolving and changing.